Hello everyone, it's DA here with my full review of Outriders. I might say some things that might ruffle some feathers among Outriders fans or foes out there. So before you go ahead and watch this video, just know this and keep this in mind. Without further ado, let's get into it. Without the atrocious connection issues, Outriders is a really decent game. It finds a balance between that overly serious approach from some games and the comical approach from other games. It is a non-service shooter in this day and age, and I think that is something that we could appreciate, though it kinda has its own drawbacks as well. It is a game that is complete out of the box and grants you everything you want right from the very start. Well, at least as long as you play the game, you will get everything you want. There are four classes in which you can choose from and all of them play a little bit differently from each other. Though classes like Pyromancer and Technomancer struggle very much at the very beginning of the game, but as you progress towards the end of the game and you begin to build more upon them, then they become some of the most powerful classes out there. In the same breath, Trickster and Devastator start off as really good starter classes, but they don't seem to become a major class as you reach endgame because they really didn't change that much they've been good from the very start so you don't notice any major impact in endgame the gist of it is that devastator is the tank trickster is the assassin technomancer is the range support slash medic and pyromancer is the witch or the mage in your rpg terms so for those of you who are new to this genre or someone who's just looking for hard looter shooters in general i suggest that you start with a trickster class even though I play mostly with Devastator. Now let's move on to world building, enemies and sound design. The world of Outriders is more post-apocalyptic as it gets, though you don't get to visit the actual city which is ridiculous considering that we can see it on the map and it's just crazy. We should have been able to do that and I think that is part of the semi open world design of this game instead of the open world design of the game. The evidence and the structures let you know that this is a world that is advanced and just went through some chaos. The enemies have a unique variety to them, more so on the wildlife than the human enemies. But the variety is still more than just a few coat of paints here and there. Enemy abilities are quite interesting. Uh, some of them are a variation of your own abilities as well, but they have some unique and brand new things that you're not able to do. Maybe we will see it in a future DLC if it does get one. The higher you go in world tier, the harder the enemies and the game becomes. And then of course you start seeing enemies utilize new abilities so let's talk about this and how it relates to world difficulty. There is a world tier system in Outriders that goes from 0 to 15 like in Diablo's Ultimate Evil Edition and the higher the difficulty you also have a higher chance of getting legendary weapons and legendary armor. Legendaries are the top tier items in this game so they're pretty much like exotics and all that kind of stuff. Side missions can be replayed in this game multiple times. There are bounties and different quests which range from finding a missing person, assassinate a camp leader, locate a power source, or just monster hunts in general. The main missions can also be replayed, but you will have to re-roll to a specific checkpoint you want in the story. And this means if you re-roll to that checkpoint, you will have to clear everything all the way from that point to the very end. So for some people who have maybe a starter boss at the very beginning of the game and you just want to be able to rerun that boss to get items, you are going to basically be rerolling the entire campaign of the game. And that might be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Now there are a handful of things to do and this is where you will get that 40 hours of playtime that they've been talking about. So let's talk about sound design and abilities. Abilities in this game looks cool and sound design is unique. However, there's a huge problem. Sometimes the separation is not done right and at times you have too many sounds clashing against each other to the point where it now begins to sound like noise and now begins to muffle. And this happens a lot, especially when you're firing your weapon and an enemy is roaring and there's a lot of effects going on left and right. Now all you hear is just a muffled sound. It's crazy and sometimes it can get annoying. Certain world actions can also trigger a sound bug in this game. It doesn't happen too often, 
but sometimes mining an item or opening a box can create this humming sound that goes on forever that you have to restart your game before that sound goes away and i think i speak for a lot of people when i say things like that will really make your head go crazy and nobody wants that in any game in any form of media period next thing let's talk about loot and gameplay if nothing else, the loot in this game is satisfying and unique enough to spend hours grinding it. Each gear has mods and it can be swapped out for something else. Now the other portions of upgrading and leveling and modding your gear opens up later on in the game, but regardless of the gear that you have currently on you, if you play within a reasonable world tier, you can make use of any type of build and you will really enjoy yourself. Now as you begin to go higher and you begin to reach late game or decide you want to go into end game, you need to have a really good build. Not the meta, but you just need to have a solid build, a solid setup, a better utilization and understanding of your abilities because if you don't, this game is really going to kick your butt and I really like that about the game. The end game in Outriders is more so like Diablo Rifts and you have 15 levels that you have to go through and then from each level, the quicker you finish them, you get more and better rewards which includes epics and some rare items and of course, some legendary items as well. It is self-explanatory. So the end game area is different from things that you've experienced while you are playing the campaign and that's one thing that I really appreciate. However, I cannot advise you to focus on end game in this game yet because of one issue that still exists. So this game is a really fun and good game till you hit the main core issue, network and server connection. While the game markets itself as this experience that you can enjoy with friends, online and crossplay, it fails miserably to hold on to that end of the bargain. I will say it is garbage. It is terrible. When playing solo, you barely get disconnected from this game, but you do get disconnected, which is also ridiculous. And then when playing in co-op, the person joining you can get disconnected due to an error that claims you are violating some weird connection protocol. I don't know who the dummy is who is responsible for coding this, but that person needs to be fired immediately because apparently they don't know how to do their job. And if it's a group, well, replace them. Hire someone that has experience or at least know what they're doing. This also goes back to my question of why do we need internet connection to play a game that looks like it was initially built as a single player experience? Why do you need internet connection? Let us solo players have the option to play offline, which will be great and then if we want to group up with other players, we can play online and this will also give you guys time to fix the online issue. That's basically what I think should have been done because right now it seems that they're trying or working on fixing their stone age servers in the back end and it's just not working out. Every day they put out a new thing, a new post on Twitter telling us what they're doing and how they're working hard which I really appreciate, but you can't just say you're doing something if we don't see the difference, if we don't see the changes. So that is one of those big problems right there. And this is going to be the second Square Enix published game with some crazy weird network issues. The first one is Marvel Avengers. And I don't think that is something that anybody wants in any game at all. This particular issue is killing the game. Now, if you get disconnected, two things can happen. You can lose all your stuff that you've been grinding for which is a terrible thing in a looter game. Or the second one is that you get placed back in the last spot before you were disconnected. And sometimes that might mess up your entire checkpoint situation where you might have to just go ahead and replay that specific checkpoint because maybe the door is now locked, enemies are not spawning, which is one of those common issues. When it works, Outriders is amazing, but when it disconnects, you ask yourself what is the point of even playing this game? What is the point of getting this game? And for this main reason, I will not recommend that you buy buy this game at full price right now. Unless you have the money to spare and not bothered by the network issues, this is a game that I will say give it like a month or two. And that is really sad because by that time, people might not be talking about the game anymore, but who knows? 
we'll see how things go from here. Best option though is to wait to see how things get fixed. If you really are loving and enjoying the game and the internet issue doesn't bother you, then go ahead, give them your $60 and just, you know, give them words of encouragement and give them words of criticism online as well because each thing helps because it lets them know that, hey, we're not gonna take the BS and we're also not that mad that we, you know, we will send you threats or anything like that, no. Um, if it was $20, I would say go ahead for anybody, it doesn't matter. Matter, but for $60, um, you need something that works all the time. I would rate this game 6 out of 10. The game lost 4 points because of the network issues. If there wasn't any network issues, this would have been a solid 10 or a solid 9 at least. Anyways, let me know your thoughts about this down below in the comment section. How do you think I did on this review? Did I highlight some of your major concerns and issues? Did I highlight the things that you love about the game as well? With that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.